Welcome to the 360 Sports Network Road to the Final Four podcast series, breaking down every conference tournament on the way to the big dance, analyzing what teams will get the automatic burst, who could make an at-large bid, and whose bubbles might just have burst. Because before we can fill that field of 68, we must first get through the conference championships. I'm James Dobson, and before we do get to March Madness, we need to talk about Arch Madness. That's right, the Missouri Valley Tournament in St. Louis. The Missouri Valley Conference is a definite two-bid league this year uh, with Creighton and Wichita State. Now, the Wichita State Shockers are the defending regular season champion. They have the number two seed in the tournament. And the defending tournament champion, the Creighton Blue Jays, have the number one seed again this year. Those two are by far the favorites to represent the conference in the championship game. However, there might be another team out there that could make a run at the automatic bid. If any team has the chance to pull it off, it would be Northern Iowa. The Panthers have a very balanced scoring attack. They have four guys who average double-figure points per game. It's very impressive for a team that, as a whole, only puts up 66 points per game. The fifth player also averages nine points per game. The balance of scoring is unprecedented for a team that doesn't put up, say, 80-85 points like some of these teams that we've talked about in previous podcasts. You cannot shut down a single player without leaving another scorer open. I really like that. Now, in particular, I really like Seth Tuttle down low. He has three double-doubles in his last six games. I also like Anthony James. He leads the Panthers. He's got 12.5 points per game. They also have Jack Cope, uh, Mark Sonnen, Deion Mitchell. They round out the top scorers. They have eight players who shoot 33% or better from beyond the arc as well. So inside, outside, it doesn't matter where it's going to be. You know Northern Iowa is going to put points on the board. And, wouldn't you know, they split both of their matchups with Wichita State and Creighton this year. So they know how to beat the top dogs of the conference. But now let's forget about Northern Iowa for a minute and talk about the two top dogs. Let's look at the number two seed, Shockers, of Wichita State. What serves them best is their depth, especially in the bench. They've been forced to, though, as injuries have made many players get some extra playing time throughout the season. They have 10 players who have dressed in over half their games and averaged double-digit minutes per game. This was actually supposed to be a rebuilding year for the Shockers after they lost their top five scorers from last season's team. And nobody expected the big play of their junior forward, Cleanthony Early. Coach Greg Marshall could never have expected the junior college transfer to come right in as he has and perform just as well. He's 6'8", and he leads the way with 14.5 points per game. And the one thing that scared me for this team was the injury of Carl Hall. But, you know, the senior is back now. He's averaging well over 30 minutes per game since he's come back. And for the season, he averages 12 points, 7 rebounds. I think he's going to be fine. So the, the one worry that I'm going to have for Wichita State then is, how are they playing right now? What have you done for me lately? And they've lost three straight games to start February. They lost the last two games of the year. Going into this conference's conference tournament, how can they respond? Will they come out strong, or could they fall flat on their face right away? Now, Wichita State also happened to split the games, uh, their two games with the one seed, the Creighton Blue Jays. And the Jays actually won the season finale, though, which is the important part, I think, looking down the stretch. They won 91-79 to over Wichita State. In that season finale, the star, Doug McDermott, put up 41 points for Creighton. The 6'8 junior has led the team all year, 23.5 points per game, 7.5 rebounds per game. He also shoots an unbelievable 48% from beyond the arc. He's not alone, though. There are three other Creighton players on the roster who shoot 43% or better from three-point range. The top nine scorers for Creighton all shoot 41% or better from the field as a whole. And that's why the Blue Jays have the top field goal percentage as a team. They score on 51% of their shot attempts. That's unbelievable. And actually, what I'm most impressed about, even beyond the three-point shooting, beyond the 51% the from the field, is their free throws. Yes, free throws are very important, especially in the modern game. Now, if it comes down the stretch, they need to make their free throws, and they have the guys to do it. McDermott shoots 87. Ethan Ragg, 93. Austin Chapman, 81. Gibbs, 77. Ekanique, 64. Um, two other guys off the bench, about 75% each. Down the stretch, Creighton will get those freebie points. It'll be very tough to come back in the last couple minutes. You may see free throw attempts in tournament play. You see it all the time. And I think, uh, especially when you have um, some of these smaller conference referees, you see it all the time that, that uh, they'll call more fouls than a big team, a big conference team, is used to. 
So it wouldn't surprise me if the Sycamores, uh, well, not only if they win the tournament, but once they get to the NCAA tournament, they could pull off a big upset. But back to Arch Madness. In the end, I think it's going to be, obviously, Creighton coming out of the top half of the bracket. Northern Iowa and Wichita State, I'm going to give the edge to Northern Iowa because of the balanced attack and because they are on the hot streak right now compared to what Wichita State is going through. This is just a really dream matchup. You have the superstar McDermott facing the balanced Panther attack. And now the Panthers, in their two games, like I said, they split. They held Creighton to just 54 points when they faced, uh, when they faced them at home. But then they lost 79-68 to when they had to play at Creighton. In the loss... McDermott put up 31 points. When Northern Iowa won, they held McDermott to just 15. If they control the clock and they control McDermott, Northern Iowa wins, period. And that's my pick. Again, since Creighton has a couple of very questionable outcomes lately, and the fact that the Jays are already a guaranteed tournament team, they're in there, they have nothing to play for, while Northern Iowa needs three straight wins to make the tournament. And you know what? That's just what they'll do. Now, all... Three of these teams, assuming all three make it, Creighton and Wichita are guaranteed in my mind. Northern Iowa needs to win it, like I said. Should all three of them make the, da the dance, I think all three are worthy picks to advance to the round of 32, no matter what the matchup that they have. The Missouri Valley Conference could make an, an absolutely amazing performance here this March. Well, that's it for our analysis on Arch Madness, the Missouri Valley Conference Tournament. Follow us on Twitter at 3S Network. Keep tabs on our website, 360sportsnetwork.com, for all of your college basketball selection Sunday updates. Thanks for tuning in to the Road to the Final Four special, and stay tuned as we continue to fill this field of 68 so we can make your brackets beat the very best they can. For 360 Sports Network, I'm James Dodson. Have a good night.